let's take a look at the Railway Labor Act. The Railway Labor Act was originally enacted to significantly limit the potential for railroad strikes to affect interstate commerce by hindering the general public's ability to procure goods and services. Railroads were the primary means of moving goods from one state to another in 1926. Airlines were added to the act in 1936 because much of the U.S. mail was beginning to be delivered by the help of airlines, and airline disruption would affect the delivery of the mail. The act also provides protection for workers' rights to join a union, and it requires that in major disputes, management and labor must participate in fairly long negotiation and mediation processes before a labor strike may be called. A strike is a collective work stoppage by members of a union that's intended to put pressure on the employer. In 1934, the National Mediation Board, known as the MNB, was created as an amendment to the RLA. Even after the NMB determines that there's no reasonable prospect for settlement through mediation, it can push the two parties to submit to arbitration processes. However, both parties must consent to arbitration. Finally, if arbitration is unsuccessful or is rejected, the NMB has the authority to refer the dispute to the President of the United States, who can create a Presidential Emergency Board, known as a PEB, as a mechanism to investigate the disagreement. It should be obvious by now that the intent of the Act is to draw out the bargaining process between management and labor and push the two sides to resolve a labor disagreement without having to resort to a strike. In fact, in most cases involving minor disputes, strikes are prohibited under this law because a disruption in railroad or airline traffic could have a devastating effect on the general public of the United States.